We're now joined by head coach Kalen DeBoer from the University of Washington. Coach, if you would start with a brief opening statement, we'll open the floor to questions. Yeah, you bet. Uh, it's uh, great to see you all. See you all and um, uh, as many days we've been here, it's uh, really going fast. Our guys have enjoyed their their trip so far. We've had, uh, I think, really sharp practices here in the in the Superdome. Um, proud of the guys' focus, and as the week's gone on, I think we've uh, continued to just ramp up the. Uh, the level of just attention to detail and uh, getting locked in, uh, knowing that the the game is uh, quickly approaching now here as we approach what we would look at as a normal Thursday leading up to a Saturday game day. So I know I couldn't even tell you what day of the week it is right now, um, but uh, that's the way we look at it. So it's been really good. I'm proud of our guys and uh, looking forward to one more practice here today and uh, then kind of more of a slower tempo uh, walk through, run through. Uh, tomorrow's practice and then of course game kickoff so questions I'll, we'll open it up for questions please wait for the microphone to ask your question and as always please identify yourself by your name and media outlet we'll start right here in the front row on the right side hey Kalen Ralph Russo from the Associated Press um, this team is mostly built up of guys that you didn't recruit or a big a big part part of the core there when you're rebuilding um, you come into a new program, you're trying to get that buy-in. Um, what's the most important part of selling your message and g then getting the players to then sort of sell it to each other? Yeah, no, um, I think when, uh, when I took the job, uh, really around December 1st of 2021, um, along with building a staff and, uh, you know, trying to put all that together that month, um, I was very intentional. And then as the staff formed, as well, we were all intentional together on really sitting and listening um, to our guys talk, hearing what they had to say, just taking a lot of notes, um, thinking about those things that uh, we were hearing good, good and bad, right? And uh, um, just trying to understand where the program was at, where these guys were at, uh, in, in you know what they wanted to accomplish, um, you know what their what their chemistry and makeup was. Uh, you know, what uh, UW football meant to them. And uh, when we started in January and we had our full staff together, even that first week, um, it, it was, yeah, it was, it was kind of, it was more of a get to know. And we, we spent a lot of time sitting around a uh, lunch table, you know, and, you know, not having meetings, not getting into the workouts, uh, you know, um, maybe the way that you'd envision it. It was a lot about just getting to know each other um, trying to be intentional on building those relationships, and I think those guys, our, our guys, started to see, hey, you know, we got a, we got some good guys, good dudes on this staff that uh, um, care about you as a person, uh, even before you as a player. And you know, we got into workouts. Uh, you know, we did get into workouts that first week, and and the vibe from the Monday meeting or the first meeting we had to five days later after a week of workouts, uh, walking in that team room. Uh, it was completely different. And so I credit our staff, I credit Coach McKeefrey, our strength coach, um, for building that confidence. I think it comes with organization and showing the team that you have a plan. And then I credit our guys, our team, for um, you know really embracing and being open uh, to whatever we were asking them to do. And that wasn't just that week. Um, that's have happened ever since we got here day one. We'll go to the left side, front row. David Uppen with The Athletic, when you got here, how would you describe your philosophy in terms of roster building, in terms of how we're going to approach the portal, mm -hmm. keeping guys, you know, how would you sort of uh, break that down? Yeah, I think, um, you know, took as much information, uh, especially in December when guys were coming into my office and, and wanting to talk and um, some guys already had their mind made up and they were, they were long gone and in the portal. Uh, and had left. Um, really not much you could do there. But just really trying to understand the roster, watching some film and understanding who who these guys were, uh, taking in information from staff that maybe uh, were still in the building. And, um, you know, when it, when it got to January and we got into those workouts, just a lot of communication amongst our coaches on what we were seeing, kind of what we felt, um, both from, a, from the physical stand, standpoint and how they were moving and and uh, work lifting, um, but also, you know, just paying a really attention to the vibe that each guy had, the body language and things like that. Not that they wouldn't be with us, but just understanding how it would all come together. Um, our staff, 
uh, you know, had six or seven coaches uh, that all came with me. And so we, we knew what we, what we needed to do to, to bring it together. And uh, I think that communication, um, that evaluation uh, was big. But uh, when it comes to the portal for us, it was about just plugging guys into spots where we felt we had gaps. And uh, we weren't just going to bring a wave of guys in and just any, anyone who seemed to be able to, you know, run, throw, tackle, you know, whatever, block. Um, we were going we were going to be very careful because we knew you know you might bring two guys in and it might push the wrong two out and uh, we wanted to be really careful with that because we felt like there was a base within the program of good football players, great people um, you know there was a lot of high level things when I was meeting with guys where I could tell that they cared about this place and when you surround yourself with the right people, um, you don't need to always go looking for you know, 15, 20, 25 guys to pull out of the portal and try to just replace everyone. So, um, you know, it was, it was a fine line there. We brought in roughly 10 guys each year. And uh, those guys have, for the most part, been very critical to our success last year and this season. Go to the right side, second row. Uh, Kyle Boniger with ESPN. Uh, Kalen, you've obviously coached in the playoffs before. A lot of major differences, of course, but I'm sure there's some similarities. How does the anticipation of this semifinal as a head coach compare to some of the others you've experienced? And then, like, what can you take away from those playoff mm -hmm. runs that's applicable yeah. to where you guys are now? Yeah, when you're at the small college level, you're used to the playoff. Uh, you know, for us back then, it was four four rounds, you know, win or go home, you know, and that's fun to be a part of. Uh, you know, it pushes you to be your best. Um, that's what a lot of people say they want, but when it comes down to those moments, um, you know, I think that's when you find out really who does want it and who does enjoy the com competition. And, um, you know, we understand what's at stake here. Uh, we win, we get to move on, and we get to uh, have the next biggest game of our life, you know. Um, but for right now, this is that one, and we're taking, you know, each day and making the most of our preparation, and that's all you can ask. And, um, my guys know that our team knows that they're, our number one ask is to bring their best energy, attitude, and effort every single day. And when they do that, the work gets done. Um, and when they work to be their best, that's what we're going to do is we're going to live with the results. And it allows them to play free. It allows them to play um, you know, fast and, and enjoy the moments that we're in, whether it's during the week of prep or on game day. And uh, that's, that's really the recipe. You know, You can't sit and have regrets. Um, so making sure that uh, everything you're doing, uh, you're intentional with your preparation and your focus on the details. Okay, go to the front row, left side. Uh, Ted Lewis from the Times, Vicky in New Orleans. Uh, a couple of things. You, you know, I want to tell you, you've worked your way up through some kind of low-profile jobs. What made you feel like when the Washington opening came up, hey, this is it, this is the opportunity, and this is, and I'm ready for it. Mm -hmm. Secondly. What do you have to do now? This is great. You're right here right now. You can win the national championship, but you've got to go to the Big Ten next year. What have you done to prepare your program? How much have you thought about that? What, what are you going to have to do to take to maintain the level where you are? And finally, what does it say about Dylan Morris to uh, stick around for this game, even though he's going in the portal and leaving yeah. you? Yeah. Well, the first question was about um, – yeah. Yeah, I think um, – I'd been on the West Coast uh, for four years, um, you know, at Fresno State, and had a really good understanding of the Pac-12. And uh, you know, I think even nationally, you know that there's been a national championship won here. There's been uh, col other college football appearance in 2016. Um, you know, I I enjoyed following Coach Pete uh, during his time. Um, you know, kind of being on the West Coast myself. And uh, we had a chance to play in 2017 when I was the offensive coordinator in Seattle. Uh, and um, just seeing that environment um, and understanding the passion, uh, the tradition, the expectations that this community, this university had for its football program, um, that's something I've, I've wanted to be a part of. And we have uh, so many great resources. Um, there's other great shows in town when it comes to the professional sports, but you know, being the, the major college university there um, and with a lot of our alumni sticking right there close to home, it's a passionate fan base um, that's a lot of fun to be around and be a part of. And so um, it, was, it was really a no-brainer uh, to 
to be looking at this opportunity um, and accepting this position as the head coach here at UW. Um, Dylan Morris, um, Dylan Morris, I think it just says a lot about, you know, what his path has been, what his journey's been here. Uh, you know, um, I think it's a unique situation for someone to have entered the portal, but it was uh, done so through great communication that wasn't just here in the last couple of weeks. It's been over the last couple of years, ever since we've been here. Um, he's been front and center. He's, uh, he's helped lead this team to where we're at today. He's, uh, he's, he's battled, you know. Our, our guy, our entire team, our coaching staff, staff absolutely love him. We respect him uh, uh, with the utmost, I mean, respect that you can have. And um, I talked to the team a little bit uh, when this kind of was going down and every single guy on the team was nodding their head when I was sharing, you know, how we were going to approach this with Dylan. It's because we all love him. We know he loves us. And, um, you know, he's still one of the first guys in the building each and every day, even right now, just like it's always been. And uh, he's ready to step on the field, do what he needs to do to help us win a football game. And I always feel like at some point when people are doing right by you and they're so much in your corner like Dylan has been, you have to do right by them. And this time in college football will come and go extremely fast for these guys. And you hope that the greatest experience of their life can happen here in your football program. But it also, you know, doesn't always work out that way. And, um, you know, I just hope he can enjoy college football uh, as much as possible. And again, that could be here, um, but it also, you know, may be somewhere else. And, uh, you know, we love him to death. Um, and, yeah, and then the, 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 the move to the, the Big Ten, you know, in all honesty, we've been so focused on the Pac-12, which was just a grind this year. Um, you know, just a tough, tough schedule, each and every team um, being elite. Um, I think that has prepared for us, prepared us for, the, for next year um, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, it wasn't part of the plan, but a lot of our staff is actually from the Midwest. You know, my coordinators really on both offense and defense, both uh, two from Iowa, or one's from St. Louis, one's from Iowa, one's from, uh, you know, South Dakota. And so a lot of Midwest ties, other coaches on our staff that have actually coached in the Big Ten, um, in different schools and universities as well. So um, along with myself and one year at Indiana, I think we have a pretty good idea of what, you know, these places look like, what the, what the teams are built on, um, the styles. Um, you know, we've played Michigan State the last two years. We went there this year, understand a little bit of the travel. So um, I think, you know, the recruiting piece, uh, we'll stick to our footprint, you know, on the West Coast. But um, it, it has, and I think it will continue to lend itself for us to be able to maybe move a little further east, um, you know, with occasional guys that we have connections to or people that really, um, you know, have, have understood what our program is all about and want to be a part of it. I will right, we'll stay on the left side of the front row. Uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, Kalen, Washington was, what, 4-8 and eight the year before you got there. Sark went 5-7 and seven in his first year. Uh, do you think we're going to see more quick turnarounds like that? Or with NIL transfer portal and what Charlie Baker was proposing, are we going to mm -hmm. see greater separation between the haves and the have-nots? <coughs> Yeah, I think the potential for the turnarounds does exist uh, with the portal. And, um, you know, for us, some of those additions that um, have helped us, Michael Penix, Dylan Johnson, um, we've already talked about them. Uh, there's their guys that uh, have d certainly got us to this point. And um, so those, I think those quick turnarounds are, are possible. Um, I think the sustained success, uh, you know, is what you got to be also focused on. And so... Um, you know that building it still from from the base with young guys coming up through the program and focusing on developing these guys as both people and football players um, is still a huge part of our program but I think you know you can plug a guy in and help raise your level where maybe it was a little harder back a few years back you know so um, and yeah I, I think uh, you know that's Probably why you've seen a little bit of the success here uh, with with Texas and their team too, with some additions they've made to their roster. Right, we'll go to the right side, front row. Brandon Marcello, uh, twenty four seven Sports, uh, and talking to people in your past, Sid Curtis Riggs, they were telling me when 
you were elevated to the head coach at USF, that it was pretty much kind of a marriage there between you and Chuck. You're kind of like mm-hmm. co-head coaches. Yeah. What was it like that conversations going in to becoming the head coach there and leading the program and how much did you lean, lean on Chuck and then also continue to do so today and how important is, has that been to your success? Oh, it's, it's, it's super critical. Um, I mean, Chuck, Chuck and I were teammates, you know, and um, I think when you're, when you're at that level and you're building a relationship and, and uh, just uh, the work ethic that I saw, you know, so I guess it's been almost 30 years now, 25, 30 years, you know, um, you know, you see and you know what people are made of when you're really trying to put a team together. Um, those are the people you want in your corner. Um, when that whole process went down um, back in 2005, when I took the head job, um, having Chuck a part of it was critical. I knew it was. Uh, he's been a part of every win I've been I've had as a head coach, you know, Sioux Falls, Fresno and here. You know, and um, I think that says a lot about what his impact is in this program. And, uh, you know, those those moments that uh, and those, those times where we were wearing a lot of different hats uh, at a small college, uh, you know, I, I know that that shaped who both of us are. And uh, I counted on him those five years there uh, in a big way, not just to run the defense, but, you know, just counting on some insight. Uh, he's extremely smart not just with his his football my iq and, and mentality but uh he's just really heady and understanding big picture success whether it's team or just um you know understanding people and so uh he you know back then um i even wanted to make sure that he felt good about his position there was things that i wanted to make sure i was doing to to put him up front and center and uh he ran the defense uh, along with many other things and um, it's just uh, something when I went to Fresno, I knew I wanted him to back, be back a part of it. And I think the timing is everything and the timing for him having put in, I think, nine years as a head coach um, just helped even solidify even more uh, the, the, the things he was telling me, the insight he would give me on his experiences now as a head coach. And that continues to this day, you know, um, things we're talking about even this morning, you know, just uh, are things that are in the back of my mind. And uh, I think most of my staff, because they've been with me, they know that, you know, the thoughts they, they tell me, um, maybe they aren't the decisions that are made in that moment, but they're things that I take very seriously and help us uh, be very, very, um, very, very smart in the decisions and choices that we make, whether it's player related or scheme related, um, you know, game management related. Um, we're just all working together. You know, I count on our staff in a big way. Thank you.